Oh, Mr. Grover 23 in the building. Man, whoo, Chevelle coming along. And you guys stay tuned. I'm telling you, you guys stay tuned because I've been working in silence on some things. And we got some collaborations that are about to happen. Like I said, I was going to ask every time at the beginning of every video, please like this video. Please like it. Please leave a comment. Leave a comment about something in regards to this video. Let's run these videos up. I'm getting a lot more traction lately because you guys and all my new subscribers and a lot of you guys are participating in the video. So I do appreciate that you guys, man, this thing is going up. Trust me, people are taking notice and I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of this video. So make sure you watch the whole video. All right, you guys, what a freaking do y'all. Your boy is back on the ground. One more time, your boy's back at it again, y'all. And man, I've been sick. That's why my voice sounds kind of raspy right now. I probably sound a little stuffy, but I had the worst cough. I had probably the worst cough imaginable. It was crazy. I've never had a cough that bad before, or at least in a while. It was bad. I mean, so bad it was keeping me up at night. I'd be like dead asleep, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. I would just wake up just hacking, coughing, 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 coughing. And finally, I would have to go to the couch because I didn't want to keep my wife up because sometimes she has to wake up early to go into work. And plus, I was just uncomfortable. So, man, I, it, this started last Thursday, and then I'm still, well, kind of just now getting past it. I actually had to take a few days off work, and I usually don't do that. Well, I guess I took one day off work, and I powered through the other two days, and that probably did me in. But anyways, y'all got a business to run, got things to do, so we got to make it happen. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick update since I, I've been kind of tinkering with the car kind of here and there. Uh, really, we've been kind of at a standstill because the power steering has been an issue uh, for me. We keep progressing kind of like every <laughs> two to three days once I kind of figure out uh, what I'm going to do. So anyways, yeah, I'm going to flip this camera around and show you guys what's up. I'm actually going to go over a few things that need to be done, where are we at, where are we at on the overall finishing of this vehicle, and then go from there. We really don't have a whole lot of things to do. I just need the time to do it. If you're new to the channel, never think about subscribing. Y'all hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. Y'all Mr. Grimmer 23 in the building. I'm trying to shoot this short video. My son <laughs> staring right at the camera. Um, he's actually just waking up. So I usually kind of set him in there to let him wake up a little bit. Then I go grab him. So this would be perfect time for me to kind of film this. Then I'll go ahead and grab him. All right, y'all. So if you're new to the channel here, this is a 6.0 truck motor that I built. I built it for boost. It has all new internals on it with the exception of the crank. Uh, big cam, big cam in it. Uh, all, all new everything, you guys. Trunning upgrade, whole BTR uh, head kit, LS7 head gaskets. It has uh, trick flow push rods, um, Texas speed cam. I mean, the works. It, it, it's pretty loaded inside, you guys. I've had this Pro Charger kit for quite some time. Finally got a chance to install it, so here we go. Now, this is where we're at now. It's pretty much all installed with the exception of the power steering pump. Now, originally on the last video, I think that I posted in regards to this kit, uh, I said that I wouldn't be able to run that pump and I was actually gonna go manual. And I looked for a manual steering box, which I had a long time ago, but then I sold it because I didn't think I was ever gonna use it. And then I found this one, really good condition. I cleaned it, painted it up and everything. Ended up finding out that I probably didn't need it because I made the power steering pump work on this one. I started to kind of think about it. And when I mounted it up, I didn't have this bottom pulley in it because I was originally thinking, well, because the belt that they sent, which is over there for this Pro Charger kit, is super, 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 super tight. I'm talking, you guys wouldn't even believe the lengths that I had to do to get that thing to actually go on. And I probably, well, I did. I did force it on because that's what they sent. So, I don't know. There's, It's a really nice kit, well put together. I'm actually really impressed how they kind of allowed all this stuff to kind of flow and kind of the belt like miss things here because everything is so tight, uh, but it works. Now, the power steering pump just barely fits on my car. Now we clear the gearbox. Now I'm talking, it barely clears. Like I can put, this is my thickest feeler gauge. I could put my thickest feeler gauge kind of in between here and the top of the uh, power steering pump and it barely clears. So, I mean, that this is how, this is how much that thing clears. So, uh, but it fits. So, and then when I put my pulley on, the pulley 
clears the gearbox down there, so we're set there. Now, the issue that I've been having is this high pressure uh, power steering hose line. So on this particular vehicle, on the Chevelle, the left one, that you can't see because of the belt, is the pressure side. The right one is the return side. So it's so tight in there, you guys can't even see it. But this is the pressure side, and then down there is a dash 10 return side. Now they send you a remote reservoir, which I have the literature for right here. And this is uh, what it looks like. So they send you a diagram on kind of how to route it and everything. So it's a remote location one. And I got to figure out where I'm going to put that damn thing. Really have been trying not to put anything on the um, inner wheel wells. And I will try to hold true to that. But worst case, I might have to put it like somewhere here. Or maybe I can mount it to the back of the uh, core support. We'll see. So hopefully I don't. Uh, if I do, I'll try to mount it into like some existing holes or something like that. Uh, but I already had to cut a hole in here to make... The Pro Charger barely fit in there, so I did cut a hole in there, so I guess it wouldn't be too bad if I had to cut a hole uh, over here on that one. But anyways, you guys, so it's a remote location, uh, power steering reservoir. We'll be able to make that work. I got to order a fitting for this. I've been ordering fittings like crazy, fittings after fittings after fittings because I didn't know it was going to work, so I just order them all, and then I just return them. That's the great thing about Amazon. So, but anyways... This is what it's looking like. So I got this one here just kind of temporarily because I was actually going to originally make my own hoses. But this fitting here is not allowing me to do that because you can see how close and how tight this is. It actually looks like it's probably hitting, but it's just, <laughs> just clearing. Look at that, you guys. Look at that. Let me see if I can grab a flashlight. Let's see. There we go. Just clearing. Now, you wouldn't believe the great lengths that I have gone through to get the correct hose in order to make that thing clear. Like my original one that was on there, which is down here, this is actually for a Chevelle. It didn't clear because this is too tall, like where this fitting is. So this is too tall. So the round part was actually hitting the, uh, the belt. So that was my issue i was trying to find a power steering line that had a little bit sharper of a turn so it would clear that so i started to look at like caprices regals other chevys other gm products looking at their illustrations online keep in mind after days and days and days of figuring out well i can use this fitting here and then i can adapt a, a 90 degree you know and fitting to it well that ended up being too tall because now you're stacking fittings on fittings on fittings even though some of the fittings are short when you stack them all up they're long so anyways long story short you guys this one that says it's for a box chevy for a caprice and for a 78 uh caprice but the one that's on mine is actually different it's actually more of the shape of this one here uh, but it also shows this as another option too. So they all use the same uh, fitting sizes and all that. So what I did is went ahead and, get, and got it because I thought that it would work. And sure enough, it did. I looked at the illustration online. It looked like that bend, that 90 degree bend that I needed to be shorter. And sure enough, when I compared the two, they were. Went ahead and installed it. And lo and behold, it clears. Now, I did have to slightly modify it a little bit. Uh, it took a 28 thou feeler gauge to clear, but when I put this 32 thou, there was a slight drag in between, um, when I was put it in between there. So what I did is I took my clamp here and then I, uh, grabbed the two ends of the power steering line from here to the other end. And just to give it a little bit more of a bend and that served to help it at all because now my thickest feeler gauge will actually clear no problem so that's perfect so that's where we're at on this this has been a pain i'm talking like a week and a half of just trying to research and figure out what i'm going to do i didn't think that i was going to be able to fit this and run this gearbox at all and that really bummed me out i was looking at electric power steering conversions from like a volvo saturn view i was looking at power assist uh, steering like it was just crazy you guys speaking of steering I did end up uh, putting uh, universal joints in here and all that, so we're good on that there. I actually had to make original one of mine fit, and then I bought a uh, a uh, coupler, or I guess they're universal, 
couplers, steering couplers. I bought one off Amazon to make it fit down here. And then up here, I had to actually drill some of the splines off of the, the steering column uh, in order to accommodate for the flat side of this coupler. And then what I did is I drilled through there and through the column portion and tapped it and then I screwed then I screwed a, a bolt down, stainless steel bolt down, so it wouldn't go anywhere. And so we're good there. And then it also has the safety of the other bolt on the other side too. So we're good to go there. So I've been at work, you guys. I've been at work. Now, my thought here is to put a 90 degree AN fitting here. So that way I can get a compression hard line fitting to uh, tighten on here. On this one, I'll have to cut this off, if that makes sense. And then the other end will be a male AN fitting and it would just screw in just like so. So picture this isn't here. It would just screw in here just like so because the fitting will have the male end and then the fitting on this one, the 90 degree will have, both ends will look like this. Other than that, y'all, we're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it fit. And then the uh, return side actually ties into the remote reservoir, as you can see from the illustration. It goes in here through the uh, remote reservoir, returns, comes out, power steering, pressure line, goes to the gearbox, returns back to the remote reservoir, and then kind of just keeps circling around. Now, I would like to shorten this hose down, but I don't think I'm going to because this bin and this space is so tight. Just with these clamp fittings on here like this, I'm going to need enough hose where I can actually allow the, the hose to be uh, a little bit more free so I'm gonna leave a little bit more length on them so I don't know I'm gonna have to hide it somehow I just don't really like the way that looks but at least for now I can ride it like this for now and then later on I can kind of attack it and go from there it doesn't look horrible but I don't really care for it too much but anyways that's where we're at on here you guys uh, another issue that I might have is is the hood closing uh, but I got some I got some ideas on that uh, the hood will close actually with that with that um, carb hat. So what this is gonna look like here is this is gonna be on top of my throttle body. Let's see, like so. And the hood will actually close. But what the problem I'm running into is once I stick the hoses on there and the other piping and stuff, it's gonna hit this cowl portion here at the top, if you guys can see that. So. Uh, another option would be to take that spacer out, which I might have to do, but the only issue with that is, is this current spacer is actually notched in the back because when I was doing my research on this throttle body setup, uh, they were saying, and I only found this in a couple different threads, and so I think this is why a lot of these TBI uh, setups initially got a bad rap because the map sensor wouldn't read correctly because it was actually blocked by the 4150 flange uh, that's on the intake. And I forgot where I found that information from. It was actually just on like one thread that I found somewhere a really long time ago. The guy said when he notched it out in the back, so it opened up that space underneath the throttle body where the, the map sensor could get a good reading, uh, then it purred, it just ran like it should. I did that and I've actually had, hadn't had any problems. A, a car buddy of mine, who's actually, uh, well, I think he's from a different country, but he lives in the States now, I think in Oklahoma. He also ran the same setup and he was having trouble with it running just horrible. I asked him if he did what I did and he said no. And so then he went ahead and did it. And then he said it ran great ever since. So perfect. So I know that that's an issue on these. Many people might not have knew about that, but uh, that's probably why these kind of got a bad rap. Uh, we're gonna have to figure that out too. And uh, just a few other odds and ends, like the uh, coil covers that I'm running over there. I'm gonna have to figure this out because it's hitting the pro charger down here. So I'm gonna have to figure out a place or take it to a shop to have it notched like this one to accommodate this pro charger there. Uh, other than that, it's just really piecing the thing back together and then we'll be good to go, you guys. So, but man, that power steering, that's been, that's been one crazy thing. Oh, another thing, I have to add a three bar map sensor. So I ordered one from EFI source. They have one that replicates an LS1 uh, map sensor, and that's exactly what I need. It actually looks exactly like the one that I did have on there. I don't know. Oh, it's right here. 
So it looks exactly, exactly like this, except it's a three bar map sensor instead of a one bar. Oh, one other thing too, I did have to get is these uh, injector adapters. So I did get new adapters. I didn't, didn't mention that. I got some Holly uh, 66 pound uh, injectors that are good for uh, 1,050 horsepower. So I got those from a local buddy here. Shout out to Reckless Whips out there. Thank you, brother. Uh, I got them from him. So that should be plenty of room to grow and plenty for the type of power that I'm gonna be putting out on this dang thing. And these adapters will allow me to adapt a truck Multec end because when I, when I got this harness, I got the truck harness for the injectors because I was running truck injectors. So I got that, but in order to run those Holly injectors, I had to get a um, adapter. So it's Multec truck adapters to EV1 adapters on these new fuel injectors. So we should be good to go on that. So that's pretty much on that, you guys, as we go to the inside of the car, um, just piecing this thing back together. I, I do have all my seat covers back in. Uh, I don't wanna unveil those yet because I have a particular pattern on there that I think is gonna look super dope and I wanna unveil that a little later on. Uh, but other than that, it's really just putting those covers back on and I pretty much have a lot of the wiring that I wanted to get done, done. And it's really just putting it all back together. I am putting a stereo in there so I do have my wires pre-routed already kind of temporarily routed here. So those are my RCA plugs, my remote wire, my speaker wire for the six and a half that I'm actually gonna have to uh, solder in some new ones so I can bring them all the way back. I just installed them and cut them there because I didn't know how much length I was gonna need, but I knew I was gonna have to run it to the trunk, but I wanted to get the speakers in because those take a little bit of time to put those and install those. So I wanted to knock that out the way, but yeah. So we're kind of temporarily ran under here all the way down under here through the side of the seat and then all the wires come back and extend uh, back here we're pretty much good to go in there oh another thing is is i had to update my tune on this vehicle in order to run my new lcd uh screen i think it's a five inch screen so be on the lookout for that you guys i did have to upgrade the uh the tuning software i should say the tuning software in order to run that so that was a little bit of a challenge for me because i've never done it before but they have some updated software that i didn't install until the other day so now we are good to go on that one then i got just got to take it to my my buddy my tuner so he'll finish uh tuning it for me he's going to help me tune this vehicle so it's running running real good back here in the truck i'm going to finish installing the stereo uh, i have an amp right here it's a Terra Amps, I believe, that's going to power my 6 by 9s I have Affinity 6 by 9s that I'm going to install, PRV 6.5s up there. I have some SCAR Audio 3.5s up front. So, yes, it's kind of a, a, a mutt of a stereo system, but all really good stuff. You're not going to be able to see it anyway, so uh, but you're going to be able to hear it. And it's going to sound super nice. I'll figure out where I'm going to mount my amp and all that stuff. As soon as I can get that, the stereo is kind of like the last part that I'm going to do. Actually, when I get the car running, then I can wheel it out of here and, you know, work on it with a lot more room. But I wanted to run the wires and have that all ready to go. And then what I have to do is finish the wiring on the battery and clean that all up. And then I think we will be set, you guys. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Uh, if I am, I can catch you up on another video. But yeah, it's coming together. It looks like a mess right now, but uh, it's all coming together, you guys. It is all coming together. Interior lights are all good now. Uh, my night lights, the orange lights that's going to light up at night. It's going to look super dope, you guys. So, man, I'm really excited about this. All right, you guys. So I got to go grab my son, get him up. He's definitely up. He's staring at the camera. I don't know how he can see this thing, the dang camera. I don't even know how he know, even knows it's a dang camera. But anyways, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. That's pretty much everything. I can catch you guys up. Uh, another time on another video, but just a quick update. I wanted to get you updated on this stuff here, you guys. So, but if you're new to the channel, definitely think about subscribing, hit that notification bell, all that good stuff, y'all. Mr. Grimm 23 in the building, man, whoo, Chevelle coming along. And you guys stay tuned. I'm telling you, you guys stay tuned because I've been working in silence on some things and we got some collaborations that are about to happen. And I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, it's uh, people are starting to take notice of 
the things that I'm doing. And um, it's a blessing for real. It's a real blessing. And I'm truly grateful. So anyways, I'll leave it at that. You guys stay tuned on that. But if you're new to the channel, definitely think about subscribing. Y'all hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. Y'all Mr. Girl 23 in the building. Please like this video, leave a comment, run this video up. Let's get it. Let's go. All right. I'm out of here. Deuces. Peace out.